We're finally here at the 100th episode of Wonderful, a somewhat DND podcast. We have a ton of fun in store, and you will definitely want to stick around for the end if you want to see one of us make a complete fool of ourselves. Here's to a hundred more. Welcome to the 100th episode of Wonderful, a somewhat Woo! D&D podcast. Woo! Woo! Yeah! Yeah! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I meant to hit clapping. I meant to hit clapping. I'm sorry. All right, Tyler, insert all of our soundboard into one spot in the... I will yeah. not. Oh. No, I just, I was trying to hit clapping. Uh, l- listen, oh, for a we're, we're so special. happy. We're trying to get zero followers. <laughs> What, we're I'm so to get hey, negative t- compared to the <laughs> basically zero followers we already have. <laughs> we're so happy I that all you. of you have joined us for a special occasion. This is going to be a bit of a longer one, but we have some stories that we've prepared for you. Each of us has prepared our own story. A few of us are are getting kind of lit. We're we're just hanging out, having a good time. What? How how does that sound, you guys? Sounds great. Yeah, that's pretty freaking good. I'm, well, I'm y- what you guys drinking? Uh, a lot. I am <laughs> drinking some whiskey. Whiskey, I'm whiskey, drinking my boys. Water, water. spiked water. limeade. I, spiked limeade, and I got me a nice badass frozen margarita. See, yeah, I I couldn't find a forty, and the only thing close Kyle's to a forty. Ta- yeah, you're you're enjoying some of the devil's lettuce. Mm, yeah, yeah, right? I I partook in like I tried to do twenty bong hits. Uh, before this for like a D20 and I got mm. to like six and I was like my brain and my brain. Like, I'm gonna keep doing more and I got I to 10 like I was like my brain and I was yeah. like okay I'm done <laughs> uh, well I, I appreciate that you have left our your brain with us here today yeah if I'd have kept doing uh, it I'd have been on another plane of existence <laughs> what do you say we get on into stories of Lost civilizations and <laughs> proposals. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I'll edit that. I'll edit that in earlier. Thank you. That. Thank you, Kyle. Yeah, Obviously, I, I, you knew, dude. You're yeah, the Reese's we're, to we're my there. Snickerdoodle, we're man. <laughs> you and I are Reese's and Snickerdoodle, and we'll introduce some yes. new characters for the other two. Oh, what's up, Matt, what's your, that wait, was right that was great. What's your what? favorite sweets? Oh. My favorite sweet. That's our um, wizard names canonically. Can I be Skittle? Yeah, Skittle is very good actually. Wow, starting off hot. Skittle is a great starting off hot. Uh, Sorry, J Man. I'm going Taffy. I'm going Taffy. I'm gonna be Oreo the Oreo, wizard. Oreo, yes. I'm Taffy the wizard. Skittle, well, Oreos Skittle. aren't my like number one sweet by any mm. means, but Oreo feels like a good. No, especially with the Oreo thins. Okay, you have if in we're the doing that, then, yes, exactly. I'm stuck with yes. I'm going. Or caramel, and I kind of like caramel. <laughs> Why not Moon oh. Pie the moon Wizard, pie dude? Is Come good. on, Moon Pie, moon pie, pie the Wizard Jeremy. is so good. I'll yeah. be Jeremy. I'll be Moon Pie the Wizard. You're yeah. Moon, pie, moon the wizard. pie the Wizard. I'm sorry. No, 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 I'm sorry right. to bogart your name, but if you know any of the Jeremy, stories we told about Jeremy, 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 he's Moon Pie the Wizard. You're Moon Pie. I was like, I like caramel. I like Twix. Dude, it's perfect. Holy shit, when yeah, I, I think of moon I pies, I, I think of Jeremy. I don't know Jeremy. how I drop dude, that absolutely. easy layup. Dude, you know what? No, I'm changing mine from Taffy malt to Malt. Is- I'm Malt the Wizard. Malt you are absolutely Malt the Wizard. I'm Malt the Wizard. Let's go. So come come, come, come on in. Gather round. Oh, sit man. sit down and t- let me tell you the tale of Immortal Wombat. That's the name of my, that, that's the name of my story. Immortal my story Wombat. Immortal right. Wombat. Right. Trust me. It has nothing to do with an immortal wombat, I can assure you. I I promise you. I don't want to get any spoiler alert. There's no immortal wombat. Okay, less interested, but I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> Our scene opens in the vacuum of space. 
swirling clouds of stardust and spinning geometric shapes made of light and some kind of cool magic glass dance and move through the inky black expanse as the camera takes us into one of these shapes with a speed that would definitely ruin the home of a 1980s family in a very comical fashion, leaving the mom or dad <laughs> spinning and exclaiming, oh boy. <laughs> Our vision pierces a tumbling cylinder as a blast of technicolor and crackling magic sends us through one of those trippy animation sequences with like five different animation styles and references that are relevant and hilarious, like Skibbity Toilet and Hero Brian. <laughs> Did you say Hero Brian? I said Hero Brian. That's correct. I was I was just checking. Uh, as as the as that cool that's sequence, <laughs> it is canon. <laughs> Hero Brian's canon in this world. That is Hero true. Brian. Hero Brian. I, I wrote it correctly, like Hero Brian. But I'm. I, I thought I, you said Hero Brian. No, no he did. I wrote it correctly. I just. He wrote I don't it how to fucking pronounce that. It, yeah. It's a game for children. I'm not gonna learn how to pronounce. Children He's not words. real. You can get his name wrong. He does exactly. It's like the fake crab. Don't even get me started. Anyway, <laughs> as cool as as that cool sequence crystallizes into focus, we punch through a thick black cloud rolling with red lightning and thunder a storm sweeping over a craggy surface of wizardo the planet of wizards what's a sprawling that? expanse of spikes and jagged cliffs what's that what i was just laughing no he, we were just enjoying wizardo <laughs> yes <that's laughs> wizardo I, I went through good. either wizardo or, or i forget the other wistopia i think was the other one it's like <laughs> wizardo was the right yeah call. Wizardo that was definitely good. the right one. um uh, a sprawling expanse of spikes and jagged cliffs of crystal and gemstone. Red dune, uh, uh, rust red dunes begin uh, whipping into a frenzy as the storm begins to consume the horizon. We see a lone structure seemingly fused together by magical means with crystals dot, uh, from the dotted uh, wasteland. A cluster of wizard towers surrounded by powerful sigils and runes creating a protective barrier for the time being at least. Inside were four figures seated at a massive black glass table. An orc wearing a sleeveless blue robe and matching gi opens an old ornate box and pulls a twisted eldritch wizard pipe. Its countenance, so twisted and awful, lesser minds couldn't even be in the same room as it. The orc packed a bowl full of purple and green moss-covered rocks into the pipe as it let out a pained wail. Yeah, boy! <laughs> the other cloaked figures slowly lower their hoods in response to the call of the pipe. A high elf with shimmering silver hair, seemingly covered from head to toe in intricate tattoos that pulse and glow. A massive figure with a crudely carved wooden mask obscuring the upper portion of its face uh, with a, a fur-covered body carrying a massive black oak staff. Like, how the fuck did he get that staff in here type of big? Like, it's way too big to fit in through the door that we didn't describe. But I'm telling you, I don't understand how he did it. It's like those cars in the mall. And you're probably wondering how he did it. <laughs> did he assemble it in, in there? there? Did he summon it? But you're not worried about that because it's way too big. Anywho, you assume it's some magic bullshit and move on to the final figure. <laughs> <laughs> sentient, a sentient amalgamation of honey, honeycombs, and most importantly, a concerning amount of bees forming a feminine body with a cartoonish beehive for its head, donning a sparkling, uh, donning a sparkling uh, magical tiara. The orc begins to chant in an ancient tongue as his hands begins to glow. As he does, the other wizards join hands and begin to chant along with him. Shout to all my lost boys. Shout to all my lost boys. We rowdy. Shout to all my lost boys. Shout to all my lost boys. Bangarang. As those arcane words leave the wizard's lips, the pipe ignites in a blast of energy. That is canon. That is canon. <laughs> as, as the, as the uh, words leave his lips, a blast of energy leaves the center of the room as the pipe ignites. As a map of the planet materializes at the center of the table, a large portion of the map is darkened by the clouds of the storm. I, Karate Wizard, hereby call this emergency meeting of the four Wiz Warlords to order. He says as the pipe floats towards his lips, Tats Wizard, Beast Wizard, and the Queen herself, Beyonce, aka Too Many Bees Wizard. <laughs> the orc said before he takes a huge rip of the pipe and exhales a cloud of sparkling smoke that solidifies into an adorable kitty cat playing with a ball of yarn. Aww. <laughs> 
We are here to he's discuss lovable. the conditions of the four realms of... Wait, what were you about to say? Sorry. I say he's lovable. He is. He, it's so. I mean, so far, that kid he is. Uh, we are here to discuss the conditions of the four realms of Wizardo. I pass to Tat's wizard. He says as the pipe floats towards the high elf with silver hair. What say you... What news do you bring from Coolsville? The storm has consumed the town of wizards whose spells help you remember why you went into the kitchen, subsequently starving out all God, the stoner wizards. <laughs> no, we need we we must save them. <laughs> we may very well be smoking the last nugs in all of Wizardo. <laughs> How will they go on? <laughs> I know it's a tragedy. The group gasps. <gasps> <laughs> As Tat's wizard blows a cloud oh that forms into the shape of a skeleton riding a motorcycle. <laughs> oh, god damn. Hell yeah. These cool. truly are dark times indeed, says Karate Wizard. <laughs> the pipe then moves towards the large fur-covered beast wizard. What say you, beast wizard? The hairy hulk nods. My kingdom in the Rainforest Cafe and Resort Plain. That's right. <laughs> this takes place in an alternate universe where Rainforest Cafe was so successful that they opened a small chain of rainforest themed family resort locations. <laughs> All the you, know, you know what? Good for them. The and they were bought them. out by interdimensional wizards. Rainforest Cafe and Resort. We'll leave the frog on for you. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> Rainforest Cafe is some magical Dude, ass shit. I, it, you, everybody by now has seen the viral video of those guys going to all the fucking Eddie Rainforest. Eddie Burback and yeah. yes, his yes. face. Eddie Burback and Ted Nevison going to the, all the Nevison. Rainforest Cafes. I'm just saying, if there was a resort, that video would have went a lot different. That video would have went <laughs> a lot different. Fair. That was a good ass video. Absolutely. Uh, anyway, but the animatronics are becoming twisted and strange and have become worshipping a golden idol that they refer to as Five bear <laughs> <laughs> the way you said that you knew <laughs> they all shudder at the name <laughs> as beast wizard exhales a cool dog wearing sunglasses and a leather jacket doing backflips what say you beyonce any word from the beehive and I don't have my phone. Hold on, my phone's on the charger. I had B noises queued up. Oh my God, up. you're doing this? <laughs> yes. Jesus Christ, no. It's very important, it's very important. No. That, that is one of my favorite bits in the entirety Jesus of Christ. our show. And it's from like the third episode. <laughs> my phone when was charging. When you did the B sound really. effects. Oh, I guess it was the fifth episode. God. <laughs> yeah, it was Nothing's more terrifying than coming home from a long day of work <laughs> and the Alexa entire blaring house beat. the entire house just sounds like <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> the other wizards all nod in approval as the hive takes a puff and exhales a realistic depiction of bob marley Hell well yeah. be that as it may they all laugh for a solid two minutes <laughs> <laughs> a continuous two minutes <laughs> I, I think our best option is to combat the storm like it's one storm and it's four of us. Like, we're the greatest wizards this side of my Mrs. Titty. <laughs> well, so Tats, I need you to know. <laughs> no, never mind. Says we'll Tats wait. Wizard as he threw up his wizard set and began crumping. <laughs> God. <laughs> While that's some dope crumping, I'm not sure we can actually fight a storm. I fear we may have to do a forbidden spell, Beast Wizard says, and they all gasp a second time. Karate Wizard accidentally inhales a couple of bees. Beyonce pounds the table angrily while making an angry expression, expression from the beehive. <laughs> God damn it. She's right, Karate Wizard says. <laughs> <laughs> Is Karate Wizard his title or his Christian name? Yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> That shit can get your magic removed for perma ever if you do forbidden spells. <laughs> Did somebody say forbidden spells? Oh my god. Yes. From the corner of the room, a figure in tattered robes, obscured by shadow, peers from the darkness with one massive glowing sickly green eye. The wizards, shocked, jump to their feet. Beast wizard becoming a massy, massive, hairy, living version of one of those cool dancing Chinese dragons from the festivals. You know what I'm talking about. Hell mm -hmm. yeah. 
Karate Wizard's hands ignite with red flame as his hair grew longer, which made you know he became stronger. <laughs> Tats Wizard flexed his thighs and the runes that made up the that made up the phrase whiz biz bitch began to spiral and glow before summoning mecha yeet a 10 foot tall robotic version of famed rapper yeet with a massive chest cannon and a keytar katana beyonce surfed over on a wave of honey as it crashed into the ground it began to form a honey golem which was shaped like one of those cool honey bears i love honey golem as a concept i love that <laughs> yeah who goes there said Karate Wizard. <laughs> as, as the Karate Wizard repeats as the figure surfaced from the shadows. The orc speaks true. With forbidden magic, you can get your magic perma banned by the mana men or worse. Dot, dot, dot. The figure removes his cloak, revealing that he is in fact a Nothic, a corrupt wizard creature that craves magic and knowledge. So this is based on a D&D monster, actually. If you look okay. at Nothic, you can look up what the, this guy actually looks like. Did you uh, say Hypnothic? No, not Hypnothic. His name is just <laughs> oh, Nothic. So I love far. Hypnothic. He's addicted to I Hypnotic. mean you no harm, I assure you. My fate was sealed long ago. The group gasps, seeing his countenance. And Beyonce throws up a bunch of honey and bees. Why would we trust someone that got lost in the sauce of Wizbiz? We could easily end up like you, Tats Wizard says as Mecha Yeet throws up the deuces and fades away. <laughs> ah, yes. What you say is true, but in my years of study, I discovered a loophole, a spell on par with those of the forbidden category, but is 100% street legal and has the potential to save Wizardo. He said with a sly grin, Beast Wizard growls before Karate Wizard holds up a hand stopping him. Hold, Beast Wizard. Let's humor them. We haven't made any deals or any promises yet. The creature produced an orb from their dirty robes and floats it up into the air in the space where the map was. It hasn't been done since the elder beards who created Wizardo ne needed to pick who was going to be in charge of what in the beginning they would hold a soul binding tournament of epic proportions and all who answered the call must participate on behalf of not just their home world, but the very realm of existence. The tournament is called the Zone Clash. The orb unfurls and reveals an ancient carving of one of the elder beards battling a strange long neck bird like entity in an arena, crudely drawn with a crudely drawn crowd watching the affair. The group studied the image as the beast wizard spoke up. And what was the purpose of this clash beyond pecking order? And how does this stop a massive storm consuming our word, you weird one-eyed fuck? <laughs> Nothing <laughs> winced. Damn, I'm pretty full, but I guess you're not done serving up these harsh browns. The ritual pulls casters from their own respective realms into a realm outside of all realities. Wizards from near and far can join, offering up some of their mana in exchange for a shot at glory. And in your case, the power to save all of Wizardo. A pause took the glory. <laughs> a pause took the room as they took in this freak nasty bitch's words <laughs> with a capital G, I mean, capital G gross, like yikes. Go ahead and look up what the Nothic looks like. Like that shit's scary. Double emergency group huddle, the karate wizard says as the whiz <laughs> as the whiz warlords huddle and quickly tiptoe to the back of the room like some cartoon ass bitches. <laughs> so you guys trust this guy? Like, I'm not sure, but I don't wanna overstep. I mean, if the world wasn't literally ending, I'd still in be con incredibly concerned at our security at the Wiz Tower. Like, how did he get in here? Has he been in here? Did someone let him in? Beast Wizard says as he transformed into an ape-like creature that just kind of looked like a depressed Bigfoot. I mean, we literally don't have anything to lose because even if we don't go with his plan, those spooky crimson lightning clouds are gonna consume everything and turn us all into dead guys or worse. The Tats Wizard says as the group slowly looked over at the Nothic who has been texting the whole time. Wait, like on a normal phone? What? This freaky ass one-eyed peep has been texting this whole time? Wait, 
Like, how did this fool get a cell phone? How does that work? Anyway. <laughs> that's true. If he tries to double cross us, we can just use our magic to make his top eye into a are, are they responding to the bees? <laughs> yeah. Anytime I just start talking after the bee sound, that's someone responding to. Responding to. <laughs> yeah. No. I'm sorry if that was confusing from the beginning. Bees wizard. Too many bees wizard will never speak real words unless Jesus it's for a bit. Christ. No, that it's canon. That is true. And if he does try to double cross us, we can just use our magic to make his up top one eye close eyes. <laughs> close eyes. Close eyes. <laughs> Close the group, eye. <laughs> the dude does a cartoon ass, incoherent whispering shit. That, <laughs> and then the huddle breaks as they return to the Nothic. We've talked it over, and it would seem that there's no sense in waiting for the inevitable. How do we perform this zone class ritual? A huge grin spreads over the Nothic's face as he gives a gentle bow. You honor me with this extension of trust. Worry not, whiz warlords. I've already got things set in motion. Leave the heavy lifting to me. And my good, good boys. Boys, the whiz warlords say in unison as the Nothic begins to scroll through his cell phone. Uh, Bagwell, Barnes, Bain, Bethany, Bethina, uh, <laughs> BP chairman, uh, Carl Henrik Savenberg. That's the real chairman of BP Oil, by the way. <laughs> oh. <laughs> ah, yes. Oh, yeah, I knew that. The Busy Boys. <laughs> Yo, what's up, boys? Yeah, we got a gig, but... Uh, no, I don't care it's your, if it's your niece's recital. I. All right, fine. You get the boys together in like an hour then and tell Bethany I'm sorry. Beth as the whiz warlord he's looks. considerate you know he he just needed he just needed to know you exactly, know exactly exactly he just he wants to connect as the whiz warlord sat awkwardly waiting for that phone call to end we cut away to the whiz wizardo badlands <laughs> craig craggy expanse made of even made even spookier by the oncoming ominous death storm we watch as several goblins and orcs set about setting up various stones and pillars and covering the ground in these strange runes that look and setting up one of those big Mandela rugs that stoners have in their apartments. Uh, yeah. All right, it's almost in place. We just need a few more key ingredients for the ritual to begin, the Nothic says as he continues overseeing the preparations. You still haven't told us exactly what the spell it will do to aid us in stopping this spooky ass, this spooktastic ass storm. That's been, I actually, I, I definitely fully explained there's a whole there's a whole tournament th did you not listen to anything I said he said to the beast wizard who was too busy turning into a dog and licking his own that was butt. a choice dog too reflexively he did that <laughs> yeah <laughs> anyway uh, I just need the four of you to touch your hands to these pillars that we have set up here and I will place my hands upon the orb in the center and then once we've done that I will begin the chant but I must warn you once the ritual starts, you cannot stop it. So make your peace now. Karate Wizard frustratedly wipes sweat from his brow, swiping his hand to the side, sending a cast of magic accidentally destroying an entire mountain and a dwarvish kingdom that ruled oh that my mountain. God. No one cared. And no one cared. <laughs> yes, what a callback. With your combined magic as well as the ritual me and my boys are setting up, we can finally take part uh, take, uh, take this, we can take this portion of Wizardo out of the realm completely, separating it from time, effectively buying you more time. That wasn't a part of the deal, said Karate Wizard. No, 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 just semantics. Let's just get the ritual going. They all nervously look at each other and nod with a shrug, knowing that they could fully beat the living dog shit out of this dude if they wanted to. So why even give a fuck? Let's just try it out. Who gives a shit? I mean, the Earth's already dying. Like, why do we care? Fuck it. YOLO, am I right? See? Relevant humor. So true. <laughs> the, Nothic, the Nothic pointed to four, all four pillars, and as he did, the wizards slowly placed their hands on it. Karate Wizard was caught off guard by the intricate runes that had been carved out into various squares upon the center of the uh, of the what seemed almost like an arena. He looked at the runes carved into the pillar and something echoed in his mind, but he could not quite find the memory. As he did so, 
uh, each other wizard placing their hand on the pillar, the Nothic began to, the Nothic began to chant. <laughs> hot air, so hot air, hot air. Bling, bling. I was like, oh, good gracious, good ass is bodacious. <laughs> as, those, as, as those eldritch words left his lips. <laughs> Uh, yes. <laughs> arcane <laughs> magic began to cling to the air as the runes began to alight, bringing a hum to the area. Karate Wizard thought again, what about this? I can't quite... <laughs> but before he could finish thinking to himself, <laughs> it cuts back to the Nothic, who is now floating a few feet above the ground as the magic begins to swirl and pulsate out from him. Because I feel like busting loose and I feel like touching you. I can't, it can't nobody stop the juice. So baby, tell me what's the use. No, Karate Wizard shouted, cutting his arm that was touching the uh, touching the pillar off with his free hand. God watching, damn. Watching the arm dissolve into magic as the other wizards chanted in unison, it's getting hot in here. A double so voice hot. spoke out, so hot. <laughs> So take off all your clothes. The other wizards uh, chanted again in unison. I am getting so hot. I want to take my clothes off. off. As the words leave their lips. And Tats Wizard, Beast Wizard, and Beyonce are engulfed in white light before a deafening roar and a sudden flash takes the Karate Wizard and he falls unconscious. Mm -hmm. To be continued. Damn. That was so great. Damn, I fumbled at the finish line, but it's okay. No, you're okay. That was, I'm literally I'm, I'm, sweating. I'm so upset I didn't include any songs in mine. Yeah, dude. Damn. I, as soon as I thought of fantasy fiction, I was like, I got to think of songs that'll be funny uh, to bring up. It didn't Honestly, even. Honestly, uh, I should have listened. That was great. I should have listened to more fantasy fiction right before writing this because I accidentally mm -hmm. just wrote a regular story, <laughs> like not oh, a regular boy. story, but like, but like, no, it's in, okay. In, in yeah, the yeah. sense we're, of we're, like, we're not God. just copying. Them. I, no, yes, know, we're, exactly. know, we're doing this remember in honor of like them. literally, literally hearing that story. It reminded me of how much I love that show and I need to go. It back was and very fantasy it. fiction. Dude, fantasy I was trying fiction. to channel them, dude. My story is called library of the ancients. Ooh. Our tale, like most, begins in a quaint tavern positioned off a well-traveled path. The Dragon's Breath, known far and wide for its spiced rums, felt unlike most taverns. Ambiance of this tavern felt much more welcoming than most. Many taverns across the land tended to see many a rough and tumbled crowd. However, the traffic at the Dragon's Breath mostly consisted of tourists uh, and merchants passing through. The tavern was easily identifiable with a large and very convincing dragon's head looming over the entrance of the establishment. Inside, we are greeted with the scene of many patrons bustling about with an excited energy and a long line almost ending at the tavern's entrance. This is one of those order here and we bring it to you kind of places. Directly, oh, it's like a fantasy sonic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> They, they get paid more if they wear I'm, I'm thinking shoes. like any any <laughs> barbecue establishment ever. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. I love a drive-up barbecue yes. place. Directly adjacent to the uh, order encounter, a very handsome dragonborn gentleman could be, sen uh, could be seen tending the bar with a welcoming smile. Overall, this place was vibes. Almost. <laughs> Almost. 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 Uh-oh. Ooh, a bit of mystery. The only thing that could appear out of place. Mystery, we snow. <laughs> we snow. The only thing that could uh, appear out of place to the bustling and jovial energy of the tavern were three hooded figures fixated in a corner of the tavern. Their presence felt fractured from the loud and rambunctious energy of the rest of the room with a quiet reservation about them. The figures seemed to be talking, however, their conversations were easily drowned out by the energy of the room. Before long, an older dragonborn woman carrying a tray with four glasses and a bottle of wine approaches the table and sits joining the three hooded figures. Now y'all know, uh, now y'all know y'all you don't have to wear those hoods in here, right? The dragonborn says as she sits down. The figure positioned at the very right answers, "We know Gladys. We just like doing it to get us in the right headspace." The figures threw back their oversized hoods in unison revealing three middle-aged-looking women. The one who sp spoke first, Arana, seemed to be the youngest of the three. Arana was a slender-looking, dark-skinned half-elf. She had long, silky black hair with occasional streaks of silver laced throughout. Ooh. 
She's hot. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> They're all hot. Uh, Hell yeah. Yes. Yeah, all uh, the wizards in my thing were also very yes. hot. Except for uh, the Nothic <laughs> <King's laughs> was nasty. Diana, the tiefling figure to Arana's left, chimed in with a gentle smile. Yeah, Gladys, you know we've got to get in the zone before going on an adventure. It's not often we get to do this, you know. Diana looked to be the oldest, adorning many wrinkles on her face. Rugged horns protruding from her forehead and a backward twisting arch and wavy shoulder length gray hair. Lastly, the final former, formerly hooded individual added, we've got to be fully prepared this time. We're venturing far off the beaten path this go around. This woman, by all appearances, could be seen as being in between the other two women in age. However, the faint golden glow would prove that she was much older than the other two. The mm. ASMR woman, Mirren, Cougar. had golden nice. white hair. I thought you said the ASMR woman. I was like, oh, so she was like, <laughs> I heard ASMR. that too. Clickety, yes, clackety, yes. clickety, clackety, clickety, clackety, clackety. She's like, guys, welcome to the bar. <laughs> the ASMR woman, Mirren, had golden white hair, a circlet adorning the middle of her forehead, and some gentle signs of age to her facial features. Gladys smiled. I'm just teasing, but you ladies better make it back safely. I want to hear all about your adventure and what you find. Ooh, it's an adventure party of ladies. Mm-hmm. This is very rat queens. Yes. The four women raised their glasses in unison and toasted to a successful adventure before heading off to bed. The next morning, before even the roosters were awake, Mirren, Diana, and Arana began their journey to the forgotten realm of... Actually, no one knows the name. That's how forgotten it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, the fair. forgotten realm. <laughs> The three women excitedly walked down the path towards their rumored destination, unsure if it would even exist once they arrived. So, Mirren, how did you find out about this place again? Arana asked. Diana added, yeah, how are we supposed to find a place that's never been found before? I only really agreed to come to get out of the house, so I've got to be honest, I'm not even sure we're going to find what we're looking for. Mirren chuckled. I totally understand your sentiments, ladies, but you've got to trust me on this one. I have it on very good authority uh, authority that we're going to find the lost realm of whatever it's called at our destination. That's what people called it since no one had been there before. <laughs> 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 I'm so confident that if by uh, some far off chance we don't end up finding it, I'll be gifting you each a book, uh, each of you a book for my prized collection. This made the other two women more excited. They knew... They knew to trust Amiran by this point, but this revelation added to their confidence tenfold, as there was no way in the Nine Hills Mirren would part with any of her prized book collection. Many days went by as the three women traveled together in high spirits. Every night they'd stop to camp, mesmerizing smells wafting out of their camp, as each of them took turns cooking new recipes they'd picked up since their last adventure. This would be their last night before reaching their intended destination, so the camp was especially cheery this night. As the three women were huddled around the fire, Arana dr- addressed the group. So what are you ladies hoping to find tomorrow? I can't even begin to imagine the sort of literature we could discover. The possibilities seem endless. Mirren laughed and added, I'm just hoping to find some stories about ancient customs of the civilization. You know I'm a softie for proposals, and I'm curious to compare their writing styles to our, uh, to our modern books. That totally sounds like you, Diana chuckled. Literary proposals. I yes, love it. yes. I guess uh, I never said the 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 through line for all of our stories. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I, I thought about that. Civilizations. Yes, I never mentioned it. I'll, I'll edit that in at the yes. beginning. Yes. Uh, that totally sounds like you, Diana chuckled. I really want to explore what they have on tools and application methods. Her facial expressions seemed to wander <laughs> off as she unintentionally followed a stray thought. <laughs> is she talking about dildos Arana belted out a laugh it sounds like we've got a lot of reading ahead of us tomorrow so I'm gonna turn in for the night uh, please wake me when it's uh, my turn for watch good night Mirren smiled and replied good night looks like Diana might have first watch for us tonight Diana sweetie come back to us honey your own first watch <laughs> Diana bolted back from her mind palace oh yes so sorry Good night, you two. The night seemed to linger on forever as each of them were filled to the brim with excitement, eager for what the next day would hold in store for them. Light began to gradually creep into the sky on Arana's watch. 
Sweet and smoky fumes from her uh, from Arana cooking breakfast helped wake up Diana and Mirren. Once breakfast was served, the trio began packing for the long, the last leg of the uh, Jesus Christ. Once breakfast was served, <laughs> are you editing right now? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> this is the editing podcast. Uh, once breakfast, writing was, is rewriting. Yes. Oh my god. Once breakfast was that. served, the trio began packing for the last leg of the journey. After only a few hours on the road, Mirren announced to the group, it looks like we've made it. Diana and Arana looked up from their conversation to see an enormous stone archway covered in moss and vines spanning across the pathway. The scene seemed to stun the trio with its breathtaking beauty. After taking a few moments to take in the sight, Mirren broke the silence. So this archway should lead us to the Forgotten Realm of whatever it's called, but I just need to find the incantation. Diana laughed. We really need to figure out a better name for this place. I agree, Arana replied. Oh, here it is, Mirren announced. She carefully opened the scroll and began reciting the incantation. After uh, after Mirren finished, the three women waited for a few moments. But there appeared to be no reaction. Oh, shoot. I wonder if I said... And her thought was cut off as an arrow streaked by her, missing by only a few inches. Shit, to arms, ladies, Arana shouted. In response, the trio swiftly retreated toward the center of the road with their backs pressed against each other. With extreme precision, Arana pulled out her bow and quickly knocked an arrow. At the same time, Mirren began chanting softly underneath her breath, readying a spell. Uh, a spell. (laughs) Readying a spell. Spell. Dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun. Um, At the same time, Mirren began chanting softly underneath her breath, readying a spell as her hands and eyes began to glow with bright golden radiant radiant energy. Lastly, Diana discarded her cloak and unsheathed a massive greatsword from her back. Several more arrows began flying their way as a horde of gross-ass skeletons began emerging from the surrounding (laughs) bushes. Uh, (laughs) Instinctually... Diana and Arana began dispatching the incoming arrows. Arana loosed arrow after arrow, perfectly deflecting enemy arrows mid-air. Any arrow that made it through Arana's first line of defense were swiftly swatted away in fierce strokes from Diana's greatsword. Before long, Mirren spoke the last part of her spell, and as she did, a huge pulse of energy shot out from her in every direction. As each skeleton was hit by the wave of radiant energy, they began bursting into holy flames. With the enemy horde greatly weakened by the blast, the three women split up to make their final effort to dispatch the remaining skeletons. It only took them a few minutes, but once they were finished, they all met back near the looming archway. Well, that was certainly something, uh, laughed Diana. I'd love to get my hands on whatever dickhead made that trap. Arana laughed as well. We seem to handle it fairly easily, but I agree. Someone definitely could have been hurt. Oh, shoot. Mirren had been looking over the scroll to hopefully figure out what had gone wrong. This was totally my bad. It looks like I may have used the wrong pronunciation by accident. Uh, Sorry about that. Uh, Diana spoke up. Oh, no worries. If anything, I was beginning to think this trip was going to be way too easy. The others laughed as they too were having the same thoughts. Fair enough, Mirren said. I'll go ahead and start the incantation over, but let me just double check all my pronunciations really quickly. After a few moments, Mirren began reciting the incantation again, making sure to emphasize every syllable as to not make the same mistake. This time, as she progressed through the spell, glyphs began lighting up at the base of the archway. Uh, With the last part of the spell completed, the final glyph at the topmost point of the archway lit up. As it did, pure magical energy began to warp in the space of the center of the archway where uh, a portal eventually opened. Finally reaching their intended destination, the three women smiled at each other gleefully and stepped through the portal. Once through the portal, the group could barely believe what they were seeing. They had fully intended on finding a desolate remains of an ancient civilization, but what they saw they could barely comprehend. Before them stood a massive tower that stretched far into the sky. It seemed to be made of a strange black stone. Uh, Silver and green were etched into ornate designs all throughout the architecture. 
Several minutes went by before any of them realized that they hadn't even moved an inch. Should should we check it out? Arana asked nervously. Yes, but let's be cautious, Mirren replied. They began making their way towards the massive tower, still mesmerized by the sheer size and beauty of it all. Eventually, they made it to the base of the tower. While there appeared to be no door, there sat a lone kiosk with a single bell positioned in the center of the counter. The group eyed each other to see who would be the one to press the bell. After a few, I love re- when words like kiosk show kiosk, up yes. in a fantasy story. Yes, <laughs> like legitimately, that cracks yeah. me up. I know it's unintentional. Yes, it really but... wasn't. It was very intentional okay, for good. kiosk. <laughs> I'm That's so funny. I think I have, uh, hold on, really quick, I think I've had. Uh, a, the I think I have accidentally <laughs> built a kiosk in. In I you did I, kiosk. I have a kiosk. Oh, you in did every kiosk. You did in the. Uh, the very, the, the very, very first, first in the uh, tavern, not tavern talks. The very first story bazaar of Wonderful's history with the uh, was this, your. The, the what was it called? Your story the, called. It was about uh, the cultists. Yeah. No. But uh, yeah. All three of my. All three of my Wasn't stories there have had kiosks. Can I... The hedge no, one the hedge was, one was after, after. The, the That's hedge... the gnomes one. It's the three gnomes in the trench coat oh, cult is thing. It the... That's the cult one. Befuddled benefactor. Bewildered one. Oh, the bewildered yes. benefactor. Bewildered benefactor. Right. No, I've actually... I did good. It Sorry, on Matt. Purpose, no, you're I good. I've had a kiosk at the beginning of all three of my things. It was, it was there outside is a good as the, word. where you guys use the form. Then I, in the hedge thing, it was Abel's little stand. Oh. <laughs> he was operating a little kiosk. Oh, and I forgot even about Abel. Yeah, <laughs> I blame I blame fucking I blame shit like Star Wars fantasy because they've got kiosks yeah. and that's technically fantasy. Oh my they've god, they've also got jizz. And I don't know about you guys. Anyway, Matt. Yes, I don't know about you guys. Anytime I think of kiosk, I have to think of the. Uh, Putting in the kiosk at a uh, at the roller coaster tycoon uh, oh, game and charging yeah. umbrellas for like twenty dollars. Oh my god! I th- <laughs> kiosk makes me think of something entirely way too specific. Yes. So I that that's the end of. I know it's not a kiosk, but I think of the samples places at like a Costco or something. All right, that's I know like we're doing a whole story foods. thing, and he's mm. in the middle of his. Anyway, what, what do we feel about top ten <laughs> kiosks? <laughs> <laughs> if a kiosk sells fries Alright go ahead Matt Top 5 Stay kiosk away. fries They began making their way towards the massive tower Still mesmerized by the sheer size and beauty of it all Eventually they made it to the base of the tower While there appeared to be no door There sat a lone kiosk With a single bell positioned in the center of the counter The group eyed each other To see who would be the one to ring the bell after a few rounds of boulder parchment shears, Diana hesitated, <laughs> hesitatingly <laughs> pressed the bell. That's good. That's good. Ding. By the way, she said "ding" as she hit the bell. Of um, course, yeah, yeah, like you do. <laughs> you, yes. you've laid down the character work. Yes. Can tell. You, you win a round of boulder parchment mm-hmm. shears. You say "ding." Yes, you say "ding." <laughs> oh heavens! One moment. A fragile voice replied. After some shuffling, from below the counter emerged an elderly tortle woman. Her Ooh. movements were slow, but gentle. Underrated D&D race. Yes, very Just Lady uh, have, Yugwe, right? It, it, is, it is. Fucking, oh my god. Well, yeah, I've got yes. a turtle loaded. <laughs> Wasn't I've even got thinking that, but yes. I've got a demolition loaded. Anytime yes. Let's go. I love that. Am I uh, too she, wore, she wore small glasses that rested on her beak-like face. She also wore a small patterned handkerchief tied around her long neck. Hello, dearies, and welcome to the Library of the Ancients. My no, name this is-, is Franklin's mom. That's who this is. <laughs> <laughs> this is Franklin's mom. I'm not going to lie, I did have some Franklin inspo Dude, in this. Dude, yeah, <laughs> this is Franklin's mom or Franklin's um, grandma, one of the two. My name's Lindis. How can I help you today? Damn. Oh, Hi, Franklin. Lindis. Um, what is this place- Exactly, Arana asked. We thought we were going to find an ancient civilization here, so we were surprised to find uh, this place. <laughs> also, did you say library? Mirren uh, added. Oh, goodness, this must be y'all's first time here. How exciting! <laughs> I love her. <laughs> 
This is the Library of the Ancients. It's a culmination of centuries of knowledge and literature. It was you mean this old ass turtle's got a bunch of books? <laughs> it was founded it's, by. It's like an Adventure Time. Yes, I did. It was it. founded by our the distant devil ancestors. Guy. No, the turtle librarian. Oh my god. Oh. It was founded by our distant ancestors who loved reading, and as uh, more and more time passed by, more and more books were collected. And using the arcane gate, our ancestors were able to safely journey far and wide to collect all sorts of books. You dropped a lot of knowledge on us just now. <laughs> the trio could hardly contain their excitement. This was well beyond what they were looking for. It had been a lifelong hobby of theirs to occasionally band together on journeys in search of lost and ancient, li- ancient literature of a particular nature. Here, the possibilities felt endless. Unable to contain their collective excitement any longer, Diana asked, So, if we were interested in perusing said library, how would we go about doing that? Arana added, Is that allowed here? Of course, sweeties. You just have to apply for a library card. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and you can have this is reminding me i was supposed to get a library i card literally need to my whole family <laughs> has a library card tomorrow. tomorrow this everyone this in my family episode, has a library card but me this episode get your is library card by this episode is brought to you <laughs> by, by the your public local library. library yeah get your library on. support your local library <laughs> absolutely. For real. absolutely absolutely we support yes. local libraries on this show there's movies Thank you, there's books there's snacks there's Go puzzles at some of them. Some some libraries, libraries have puzzles. They have a way vamp. that some people are able to use the internet. Yes. Some people who can't True. use the internet otherwise. True. Dude, they literally Shout have listings for all Thank the you, public man. events I, in your area. I want you to know, I had to, Go for it. I had to withstand my inner Elon going, My grandmother. Books for nerds. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, yeah. For one, so two things. One, my grandmother's been a library fifty years. She's a saint. Love her. Mm. Jeremy, I was literally thinking about this. While sorry, Matt, we'll get back to you in one second. I was literally thinking about this. I don't think I ever told the other two of you. Jeremy and I have made jokes about this. The whole reason your adventure started in a library was because when y'all were creating your characters, Jeremy <laughs> mentioned something about books. And I had the idea about the secret compartment in the library. Mm. And then I was like, so Jeremy, your guy likes books, right? And Jeremy was like, nah, <laughs> yeah. he fucking hates books. You, well, it was, That's so I think fucking you for, good. So, yes. I think you, Literally, that is how I think you forgot our story you did, came you did to be. something I actually really liked and I want to steal, which is we all came from a hometown and you were like, name a place you love, name a place you hate, name a place you've never been. And I think both of my last two were library and library. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> I, I love little things like that because yes. it's like that that helps a care a person get into the character ship beyond mm-hmm. like what D D is offering to you yes. it's like oh i didn't even think a- about that for my character point at the picture's right? motherfucker yeah. at a restaurant anyway sorry matt yeah yes. please continue that. of course sweeties you just have to apply for a I library love this character card. so much and you can have free reign in the library of course, that is, as long as you agree to our terms and conditions. <laughs> it's not a lot. Don't Just read them. Don't burn the place down. You know, regular library rules. <laughs> we would never, <laughs> Mirren said aghast. We love reading, and to be honest, we would die before letting any harm come to such a magnific- uh, magnificent place. Linda true smiled about every softly. Library, by the way, every library yes. has a sign that says, "Don't light this D- place on don't fire." Don't light this please. place on fire. It's canon. Linda smiled Signed softly. The fire department. <laughs> Linda <laughs> smiled softly. I'm so happy to hear that. Now all I need for y'all to do is sign a few things, and I'll get those cards for you. After a few minutes of paperwork, Mir and Diana and Arana were each issued a library card. Now. As long as you have this card on you, you can nev- uh, you can enter the library from any part of the tower. The wall will just open right up for you, Linda's That's instructed. So cool. The group graciously thanked her and began heading for the wall of the tower. Oh, oh, one last thing, ladies. Was there anything in particular you were looking for? 
The tower could be overwhelming at times, so I'd be happy to help point you in the right direction. The ladies all blushed and giggled slightly by this question. Well, um, you see, we're sort of enthusiasts for... (laughs) Haha, Diana's thoughts trailed off again as she giggled to herself. Mirren spoke up to finish Diana's sentence. What she means is we are suckers for some old, uh, some good old fashioned erotic smuts. I knew it, <laughs> fucking Matt. Literally for the last five minutes, I was like, I see where Matt's going. Yes. I love it. Lin- Lin- These baby. old ladies just want yes. some smut. Yes. Yeah, dude. Linda's now. Your whole story is just some <laughs> old ladies trying to get, get their porn. library yes. card. Yes. Like, Holy get shit. Porn. Their whole That's thing. That's so good. fucking their funny. Their whole That's very thing good. is that they are occasionally adventure and they Matt, scour I knew the you world would deliver. for smut. <laughs> Listen, I knew you would... De- Sorry, I'll let you finish yes. in one second. I knew you would deliver a somewhat serious story with a subtle joke at the end. Yes. That's so fucking funny. Yes. That's so good. Oh, my cheeks are hurting. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know. It's so hard because like oh, I'm trying not to that. laugh over stuff, but at the same time, I've just been like, <laughs> over here by myself. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you've just delivered us yes. an interesting story. Yes. That is like, oh, yeah, they were just trying to get a library. Card. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's, That's so, so fucking funny. funny. Sorry, go ahead. No, you're good. Uh, I'm, I'm going to reread the last sentence. So, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, Mirren, my cheeks hurt. <laughs> Mirren uh, spoke up to finish Deanna's sentence. What she, means to, uh, what she means is we are suckers for some good old fashioned erotic smut. Lindis now also began to blush, but giggled as well. Oh, I know exactly where that is. Actually, if you don't mind, I'll show y'all the way myself. The end. <laughs> <laughs> she knows all about yes, the smut. Like, that's dude. where she lives. Yes. She's the Gandalf Matt, of the that's smut. That's great. Here's the thing. One, that was just That was a good really good story. Love it. Thank you. Love just good storytelling. Thank you. But I love that it all comes culminated not only in a joke Mm -hmm. but also like the fact that the whole story is just them trying to get a library card is totally something i would do i love it yes do you um is this so you said the end is this a to be continued it felt like there could be a to be continued the journey definitely it could be it could be uh, it could be yes listen if whether or not the listeners want this, we're gonna do another one of these yes, episodes thank before you. this year ends. Okay, yes. I'm thinking of. Man. I need a continuation of Kyle's story. I'm just, I just want more excuses to write things. Yes, dude. I want a continuation of this story. God, my story does not have it to be continued. Oh shit, that's all good. It's all but good. But I'm excited. Matt, you can continue within your realm, you. Really within thank your non, you. your non wonderful realm that you're building. Yeah. I I have one last thing. I have one last There's thing for my story. Seven realms. Oh my god. I have I have one last thing for my story. I I couldn't get it in there in time. Okay. But that they, they do have a group name. What's the group uh, name? Uh in in proper wonderful fashion, their group name is Sam. And that stands for uh the somewhat adventuring mothers. Oh, that. that's good. Yes, somewhat adventurous. I think adventurous. Yes, somewhat, somewhat adventurous, adventurous mothers. That. Oh, I like the adventurous too because it mm-hmm. feels like ooh, risque. A yes, little too. it's a dark and stormy night. Wait, what's the name of the story? Oh, what's <laughs> the name of your story? The the endless or, maze. Unless you have like a title card review. The endless maze is fine. The, the endless, endless maze. maze. Okay. So it's dark and stormy night. Not much to do at my desk. That's when she walks in. The guide. She came in with a problem. And I was a fool for giving into those looks. Mm. The endless maze. I love it. Jazz. Jazz. Exactly. Jazz. Jazz. Cut to time passing. And now he finds himself in a hallway amongst hallways, in an endless sea of hallways. I'm a fool. 
That's the thought I keep coming back to. What else could it be to end up in a situation like this? Aimlessly wandering in an archaic maze filled with the others. It's a strange feeling, honestly. I feel wholly responsible for my predicament, yet I can't help but also feel it was inevitable. I wouldn't have ever made different choices, after all. Each of those choices landed me here, so really this place was always going to be my grave. I was always going to volunteer for this mission. I was always going to venture into this place with not enough supplies. While I appreciated the risk conceptually, I never really thought I would experience them personally. I was always so getting... Noir. Yeah, that's on your mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. I fuck with it. I'm so, I'm so engrossed right now. I was always going to get distracted by a find before realizing I had lost my way. My companion was nowhere to be seen. Now, I was on my own in this hellish nightmare labyrinth. The maze itself isn't terrible. It has its twists, turns, and traps. But nothing I, I was prepared for. Tyler, edit in a saxophone right now. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Wet alleyway. Nothing. Cigarette. <laughs> Piano. Lightning. Piano music. <laughs> also, I would love fucking jazz behind this. God, I love yeah, jazz. I know, right? I, that's like the, the most Louisiana ass thing about soundtrack. me is jazz is the fucking best type of music and I'll fight anyone who disagrees. No, it's absolutely jazz is dude. I'm picturing I'm Both literally picturing the big O sound and, jazz. And more like, perform, like <laughs> more like jizz. Alright, anyway. You like uh, jazz? You like jizz? It has its twists, turns, and traps, but nothing was could have prepared me for the real reasons I'll die here. First the size of it. I knew this site was big compared to others I had pl plundered before, but this was unreal. Hallway after hallway, turn after turn, it just keeps going. What's worse is because everything is so familiar. I'm having trouble even determining which paths I've already taken. Yet another mistake on my part was trying to leave a shoe to see if I run across it again. And I haven't, which is good on one hand, and I'm shoeless on the other, so. <laughs> shoeless on the other hand? <laughs> no, I'm gloveless on that hand. Yes, I love that. Time is hard to keep track of in this dimly lit tomb. No windows or doors leading out, at least none that I've seen since we've come in. Only more labyrinth. Then, beyond the size issue, is a much more immediate threat. I've come to know them as the others. They seem harmless, even human, when you first see one. But then you start to notice the imperfections in the disguise. Their nose will be slanted to the side just so. One ear will be ever so slightly higher than another. Some are even missing whole limbs entirely, but operate just the same. There's something off about them. Their conversations are always almost words, almost sentences, almost ideas. However, the most alarming aspect of these creatures is their smile. The too sincere, too wide smile. The smile you draw on a figure for a child so that they could see the smile, but the teeth a little too sharp for your liking. The jaw a little too wide. More reminiscent of a Big Bad Wolf from Children's Tales. And that. 
was a fuck up. I skipped the word that. I'm sorry. <laughs> you just, <laughs> I love you just describing like Ugh. fucking mutilated <laughs> chads. I just love that each of us is bringing something different. Yes, I love it's it. It's such a variety show. All right. Anyway, <laughs> what if we call it the variety it, show? <laughs> Listen, all of us have different styles. That's the thing. Staring at the Thank- mic. All right. Sorry. No, you're good. All right. Thankfully. I- Jeremy's the hot one. <laughs> Jeremy's the hot one. I'm the scary one. You're the sporty one. And that's the girly one. Hell yeah, dude. God. But here's the thing is, I'm though, jealous. that Kyle's the hot one, but also the intriguing one. I'm the mm. hot but scary one. I want to be the hot but scary one. I'm, 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 sp- but scary. I'm, I'm scary. It's spice. intriguing. It's scary it's spice. It's like... It's like the cool guy who's like, oh, but she's so Halloween. <laughs> yes, exactly. Right? That's it. I'm so Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, Jeremy. All right. Uh, thankfully, I learned very quickly that as long as I mirror them just enough, they don't notice me. It, it's safe. It's only when I start going against their endless flow through the maze. Only when I stopped picking up and putting down random items like I was searching for something I could never find. Only when I would fail to do these things would they notice me and begin staring and smiling and walking, just walking. A snail's pace, really, but the inevitability of it when it was happening. I won't be making that mistake again. So far, I've only had to deal with it twice. Twice I was able to save my own life through just the nick. Once in an old wine cellar area, a pair came in and immediately began to be hostile. I learned quickly there are also places that are just off limits. The second time was when I tried to climb over a stack of old crates. They didn't like that one bit. Did the others build this place? It's old, so I doubt it was any of the current occupants. But originally, someone, something built this place? Now that I think of it, maybe it was the current others. Nothing says these creatures have to age like we do. If they did... I'd wonder why. Why age like us when you're just off? If they didn't, well, then I'd wonder what made them and what they've done with all this time. Time, time, time. All right, finger snaps. Time, time, time. Hunger is beginning to set in now. I may as well throw away whatever remaining hope I had. I don't wish for death, but it's a fool's game not to recognize it once it arrives at your doorstep. I hope I hope they find me. My family deserves a body at the very least. I guess I'll never know. Thinking about it, it won't really be my problem in the end, so why bother? Wait a moment. Looking around now, I actually see something familiar. Rations. Rations down here. I've heard one of the reasons people ventured down here was there'd be food, supplies, even clothing, but I never thought I'd be so lucky. Old, dry, but very much still edible. Now, if I can take this massive bag over to a fountain I passed a while ago, I may be able to live it. I'll live just a while longer yet. Before, I just assumed it was a trap and definitely wasn't thirsty enough to try that ill-gotten water. Now, at death's door, the way I am, poison would be the least of my worries anyway. So either I have a... become a little blonk from uh, the Uh glass onion uh there. Yeah. (laughs) So either I have a meal of rations and water, or I have one last meal in the end. Either way, my problems are solved. 
retracing my steps has proven to be more difficult than expected. Not because of the paths, remembering them is easy, but the others. They've become quite interested in me. Whether that is because I'm going against the flow so rashly, or if it's because I'm struggling to carry this very large, heavy sack of dried food. I'm not sure. <laughs> I am sure that if I don't lose their attention, I will never make it to that fountain. Finally, my worst fears came true. A very large other with broad, muscular shoulders in a flimsy-looking garment began approaching me. This is offensive. Jeremy put Why? me in this story. Why, hello, little one. Oh, God. It said as it towered over me, I dare not look up at its hideous smile, or it would be my last foolish act. You wouldn't <laughs> happen to be lost, would you? <laughs> it said, seemingly dragging out the word lost like it was begging me to say yes. <laughs> no, I'm not lost. Just trying to get some supplies for my very sick family, I said, hoping the lie would buy me time. It took a step back as I said sick, and it continued to probe. <laughs> That's terrible! Would you happen to know what they have? Why don't you seem sick at all? Oh, I don't like this character. <laughs> <laughs> Like, you can tell their mouth is somewhere it shouldn't be talking to him right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Realizing this was my chance to scare the beast away, I replied, Oh, I don't have it yet, but it seems pretty serious. My little sister is completely bedridden and must be looked after near constantly. This made the beast step further back, clearly afraid of contagion. Now to drive in the dagger. Or, sorry, don't worry, though. They said it's contagious, but only once the ill start scratching uncontrollably. And as I said it, I began subtly scratching my arms and chest, almost like I didn't even realize I was doing it. Little one, you scratch yourself even as we speak. Oh, you have no. got it, and, well, infect everyone here. If you don't, not leave. Please leave. <laughs> oh no. It, oh god. It was now oh, speaking terrifying. to me from ten feet away at least. The others around me as also began avoiding my path and sneaking glances rather than staring like before. Don't worry. I'm re I'm headed for the exit right now. I just need to grab this bag of rations and I'll I'm good to go. It was nice meeting you. I wasn't entirely lying, for what it's worth. This would be an excellent haul if I could make it out of here. With that, retracing my steps became much easier. It seems like the others mimic each other in a similar way as I was mimicking them. Once some of them started avoiding me, they all followed suit. It would be hard not to feel hopeful. That is, until I got to the fountain. Until I opened my sack of salvation. After shoveling a fistful into my mouth, it came out just as quickly as I realized with fear and distress and panic in my soul, it was fucking dog food. <laughs> oh my oh god. My god. <laughs> <laughs> Never before had I tasted something so truly unpleasant. I quickly rinsed my mouth out with the seemingly poison-free water, thankfully. Perhaps starvation wasn't the worst way to go after all. I don't think I could stomach these pellets for a single moment, let alone days or weeks. David? A familiar voice called out. <laughs> Mama? You found me? <laughs> shouted me. I shouted the queen. <laughs> What in the world are you doing in the fountain? She questioned. I was rinsing my mouth out, Mother, after trying some of this horrible ration. David, that's dog food, sweetie. It isn't meant for you. <laughs> oh. I knew this was a fucking kid. Was it, at least, was it at least on your list? 
No, we don't own a dog or cats. But I have to buy that Listen. bag of dog food now. <laughs> <laughs> you send a kid to the All store of us again. think about eating dog food. <laughs> Dude, I love... So, Matt's was... They're going to the library to get a library card. And Jeremy's was... A little kid got lost on the way to get his fucking groceries <laughs> for his family. <laughs> this, this episode is brought to you by... Hey, kids, be responsible. <laughs> be responsible. <laughs> go to the library. Go to the grocery store. <laughs> Did you guys I'm sick? Go, Who knows? I mean, I'm going to get a library card literally in the next two Dude, hours. that's the fucking <laughs> best shit. I'm just glad that you guys like, were like, you're I, getting into you the saw noir. Earlier, Tyler said he's going to release the VOD. I covered my mouth because I realized and I was about to say, Jeremy, is this a lost child? I was about <laughs> I have a YouTube video to send you that is like almost like the exact same kind hey, of premise, but how fucking good so was funny. that though? I was really proud That's of that. So good. I was That's just like so that good. was you can barely tell it's a child Jeremy. the whole time. No. Like when Listen. you said the she but kind of <laughs> glanced away from it being a romantic kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay, something's up. She didn't come back either. There was That's his mom great. asking her to go to the grocery store with him. Yep. Oh yep. my god. That's, That's the so proposal. Weird. Oh my yeah. god. That's so good. Jesus great. And the, Christ. And the <laughs> is the lo- I feel like the Lost Kingdom bit is him being lost no, it in was the just, grocery it store. It was just it was just he was lost, yeah. Jesus it was Christ. exactly For, that's so I, I hope it came Jeremy across Bravo. that night. Jeremy God Jeremy, you, you and Matt both I'm literally very proud of I, I didn't I didn't like I wasn't surprised uh-huh. by like like I obviously I could tell you boys get good writers, but you uh-huh. both you both blew my story out of the wall. I hate that Tyler made me go first because the, <laughs> the payoff no. the payoff for your jokes were all so uh <laughs> I do God. like that me and Matt independently came up with a, what if they were just doing a mundane thing that we described yes. fantasy? Yes, and yes. then let's just make it fantasy. Yes. Yes. That's such a good joke. Yes. That is so Now, funny. when Tyler does it, it'll be the rule of threes. The rule of three. Oh Dude, because mine was literally like, mine no, was yours was like setting up shit. Yours was, so funny. yours was like setting up and then poop fart jokes, and that's what we want. King Orlando Bloom no really <laughs> Jesus Christ. Damn. sits in his ornate bejeweled throne sipping a chalice of the finest wine this side of the drippy clit. Oh, <laughs> drippy boy. Clit? No. The giant, the drippy clit. No. Sorry. <laughs> the drippy clit is the giant river separating this side of the east from the west. Here in the land of Philopia. <laughs> Philo- <laughs> there it is. Christ. The king's girlfriend, Candy, sits on her lazy boy recliner, <laughs> obnoxiously popping bubblegum bubbles. Hell yeah. While scrolling her wander phone. <gasps> King Orlando's jester, uh, Stinkle the Gnome. The Gnome. <laughs> He's got to pronounce I don't know why I pronounce it like that. Sorry. No, I like it. The Gnome. Stinkle it's the canon. Gnome. It's canon. Approaches the dais, his silver bells jingling with each hilarious step. Silver bells. King, or- King Orlando. Stinkle the Gnome. Nope, that's not his, his line. <laughs> King Orlando, the orc you, the orc you called for just waits outside of the room, the throne room. Thanks, Stinkle. Send him in. <laughs> that's that's King Orlando. Yes, of course. Uh, Stinkle bows and begins to walk to the door. Does Stinkle and have then, any relation uh, to Smello? <laughs> Smello? No, they don't. Re- they're they're not related. They're not related. Okay. But they probably fit similar norms within each other's worlds. Um, Orlando King Orlando says, "Wait, before you, uh, before you go, do do that thing I like." 
Stinkle drops his pants and lays down on his back. Oh, his limp gnome chode <laughs> sits. <laughs> saggy like scroat. I don't like any of this. His saggy scroat yeah. flops around unprotected. <laughs> after a moment of anti- of tense anti- yeah. after a moment of tense anticipation. The gnome farts with enough force out of his cock and balls <laughs> to flip up onto his belly. What the fuck? He farts with enough force <laughs> to flop his cock and balls up <laughs> onto his belly. What am I fucking what It's God? gross as shit. <laughs> but you the king go- gets a kick out of it. <laughs> gets a kick Thank out you. Of it. Thank you, Stinkle. Yeah. Now let the orc in. A buff orc makes his way confidently up to the throne and drops to his knees, bowing before the king. Once again, I'm so sorry. Yeah, okay. I'm losing. You killed Matt with the first fucking joke. Matt is Your not grace. That's a fucking order. Your grace, it is I. Sir Gregory Huge Member <laughs> And I am here to service you Is that a Christian name? In or? case y'all forgot The episode is no, called we, Gregory's yeah. Huge Member <laughs> No we found him There he is yeah. And the buff orc's name is Gregory Huge Member Oh my god And he is here to service King Orlando <laughs> That's so fucking funny Yes Gregory It is I oh, Your king I've heard many stories of you and your huge member. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh. Yes, and it is said that the Pink Canyons have yet to recover from the dis- the devastation left by you and your huge member. <sighs> and your crew. <laughs> oh. Gregory blushes, but not in a shy or insecure way. But in the way that only a super bu- uh, but only in the way a super buff and confident badass could. In fact, the king's GF Candy, her panties were definitely soaked, and she is a master of hiding such things. I mean, could you imagine if the king found out that another man made his GF? Lady Jizz in her undies. Jesus. Could you even imagine? <laughs> Why? Oh my fucking I'm sorry. God. Bro, I'm gonna pass out. This is not, not a- even considering <laughs> the sexism of the time. Kings <laughs> are just known for inferiority complexes God. and such. God. It's so it's brutal. probably a good thing that she's so good at hiding her orgasm. God, I swear to God, if you throw a chance in there, I'm gonna fucking die. Oh, anyway, I'm so hot, I gotta stop laughing. My face hurts. Anyway, the king has a quest for Gregory, huge member. And then Gregory says. Anyway, I have a quest for you, Gregory, huge member. My team of scouts believe that they have located the lost Zoom city of Sheldon Why Cooper. So- I'm trying to read. I'm trying to read. Zoom it in. Shut Just up. Zoom it in. Oh my fucking god. Oh my god, my brain is going to laugh at you now, too. Shut up! Shut up! My team of scouts believe that they have located the lost city of Sheldon's Cooper. Oh no! In in the fourth zone of quadrant three. He said, "So there's over seven rounds." (laughs) The fourth zone of quadrant three, Gregory says, but that's impossible. Every history book states that Sheldon's Cooper was somewhere within the third zone of quadrant eight. (gasps) And Orlando says, I know, 
We've had our scouts scouring the odd-numbered zones of even-numbered quadrants for a decade. (laughs) Jesus. I know. Your resilience and gusto, my king. This is surely a momentous, a mon, a momentous discovery. A momentous Gregory, shut up. Gregory, Gregory said, "Gregory said, holy shit, this has just become a scouring of Tyler." No, it hasn't. No one has been scouring you. I'm no, a good you're time. right. It has been nothing of the sort. We've been cracking up laughing at this actual story. And then this just now so you're like, Jesus I'm this Christ. high because you asked me to be. Dude, this shit is fucking funny as hell. Don't get in your <laughs> you head. You said Please Jeremy continue. get fucking shwasted. I'm not in my own head because not a single thought exists within <laughs> my head. <laughs> There's gonna be a lot of good people. <laughs> You're eating my, my head. head. Is gonna explode. My head is literally gonna explode. Oh Jesus my, Christ. Dude, my brain is on fire. I'm getting a migraine. Listen, here's the truth. Tyler feels really bad. Usually he's somewhat in control of these situations. Okay. But he's very drunk and listen, he doesn't know listen, what he's been maybe, saying. Maybe perhaps we sojourn and unless you're you feeling confident to continue. No, Tyler's going All to right. finish this story yeah. one way or another. Power through. Thank Power you, God. Power through. I admire your resistance and gusto, my king. This is surely a momentous decision, Gregory says. Thank you. Thank you, Gregory. I and and the king is interrupted by Candy. Ahem. <laughs> yes, uh, it is actually Candy who discovered the location of Sheldon's Cooper. Um she was on her wander phone scrolling through Rick's rocks <laughs> and found this video. You know, Rick's rocks, aka TikTok. Oh, oh my God. clever. Like Rick's rocks. It was TikTok. TikTok. Ah, yeah. I was thinking Rick Ross. <laughs> it was or Rick Roll. It was right under our nose the whole time. Uh precisely. I just need you to li- to deliver this package to Sheldon's Cooper, King Orlando said. King Orlando handle- hands Gregory a small rectangular box, the contents of which would remain secret from even Gregory. And King Orlando says, uh, I have assembled a crack team of, of adventurers to accompany you to Sheldon's Cooper. We then cut to... A kick-ass montage, kind of like the one in in Suicide Squad, (laughs) but not the good one, but the shitty-ass one, pop music plays, and it's badass, but in like a a totally normal badass way. Not in the way like, you know, supposed to happen in the badass second movie, (laughs) but like in the first one. So I guess it's kind of not badass. But you believe it's badass while it's happening. <laughs> and we get a montage of all of the team members of this new Suicide Squad. Chadford McKickflips. A teenage <laughs> goblin rogue does a kickflip. A double ollie twist a double with shit. a single McFlurry handstand. Hell yeah. I know that sounds nonsense in our world. But trust me. Chadford McKickflips is the real deal. <laughs> yes. Number two, Blinkton <laughs> Parcel Fli- Blinkton Parcel Thwaite. Oh my god. A bit of a dandy, but don't be fooled by the name or dapper demeanor. This dude does not fuck around with your shit. <laughs> no. <laughs> that was <laughs> this not- dude will fuck your shit right up with a single glance. Bink- Blinkton Parsothwaite. He he looks at the camera and does the blue steel look from uh from Zoolander. <laughs> yes. The whole room 
simultaneously comes one huge cum <laughs> and it breaks the Guinness World Record the for the biggest cum ever come. The Jizzest World Record, did you say? The third guy. <laughs> His anyway. name is Trundle Crundle. Uh, and he's a stinky pile of shit. Oh my. <laughs> the king claims that this game. guy is is uh he's a guy <laughs> or something like that. But is this different like than Trundle? Sh- sh- <laughs> it seems like he's <laughs> an actual a guy, but a pile of shit. But he's just like a pile of shit in a wheelbarrow. (laughs) Which is a shame because now your whole team has to carry a wheelbarrow (laughs) around the rest of the time you're on this adventure. Oh my god, I'm so sorry about it. No. (sighs) And finally, the last member is named Horny Trent. (laughs) And he's just the horniest guy. In the whole land of Fallopia. Gross. In fact, Fallopia Horny Trent gross. originally hails from Las Vegas, but they decided he wasn't horny enough, and so he was left with his wife and kids in the middle of the night, and he left them because Fallopia was, quote, Fallopia, don't mind if I Fallopia do. <laughs> Uh, but it, it it didn't really make sense. Fucking hell. <laughs> Jesus. And, and then he ended up just kind of staring around in the room around him. It was like, you know what? That's good enough. That's good enough. Oh, my God. Uh, so, anyway. And with that, Gregory Huge Member was set off with a crew. A huge member. A huge band of four members. And a pile of sentient shit, which <laughs> is, is sentient, Wait, it's sentient now? No, it is sentient, but in quotes. <laughs> Why uh, did you put that in quotes? N- none, none of us... <laughs> no, 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 But in quotes, none of us have seen it do anything yet, but the journey would take a couple of days. So by now, it probably has done something by now. And Horny Trent says... So, what do you think of the king's GF? And Gregory says, Oh, oh, she seems nice. And Horny Trent says, Yeah, pretty hot more like. And Gregory says, Yeah, I guess, sure. (laughs) And Horny Trent says, I caught her walking out of the bathroom one day. And Gregory just winces awkwardly before a full 30 seconds of uncomfortable silence. (laughs) And Horny Trent says, what do you think was going on in there? (laughs) And Gregory says, I don't know. I don't know. And there's an awkward pause again. Horny Trent says, could you imagine if she pooped in there? (laughs) I'm going to I'm going to walk over there, I think. <laughs> and Horny Trent's like, "Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay." <sighs> and then Gregory walked off so as not to be interpreted as involved with Horny Trent. <laughs> <laughs> and then no one spoke with Horny Trent for the rest of the journey. Uh, Dude, I was so <laughs> team Horny Trent. And Horny Trent's kind of a terrible guy. Oh yeah. He's a piece of shit. Horny Trent is in fact a piece of shit. Hear me out, though. He is a piece of shit. Don't you Horny dare play Trent. devil's advocate, Kurt, for a man waiting outside of the bathroom for other women. Stop Horny, it. Horny Stop Trent. it. He's honest Stop. about who he is. Get. You're <laughs> done. Get. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> He's not a secret bad person. He's very open and upfront about it. He calls himself That don't Horny make it better. Trent. That doesn't He's make like, it better. Hey, yeah. I'm going to commit sin. I'm telling you That's this like now. People- Whatever you happens what? is your pl- decision. Oh, boy. Guys, this episode is brought to you in part by my brain hurts real bad and it's hot and I'd like to turn my computer off forever. Forever. Okay, let me finish up. As the sun began to lower, our heroes finally made their entry into the fourth zone of Quadrant 3. Their journey to the lost city 
of Sheldon's Cooper was nearly over. Unfortunately, Blinkton Parcelthwaite and Trundle Crundle, the shit guy, had <laughs> lost a disappointingly uninteresting z- in- had lost an uninterestingly <laughs> encounter with a coven of witches. Blinkton was deemed not sexy enough to pass and was turned into an acorn. Oh my- and was subsequently sucked into the cheek pouch of a big ass chipmunk named Clancy. Oh, I yes. love him. Trundle was confusingly deemed way too sexy and was married off to the head witch's daughter. Oh, it's like a sandlot. They had, they had a lovely ceremony, but our cameras were not allowed to capture it due to a some due to some new unplugged ceremony bullshit. <laughs> That's so fucking funny. Uh, the proposal. So Our heroes drew nearer and nearer to the lost city. They grew more and more anxious that they would somehow miss it. So they decided that their best option was to stop at the local establishment to ask for directions. I grow more and more anxious that we will somehow miss it. I say that our best option is to stop at the local establishment to ask for directions, Gregory said. Everyone agreed. We agree, said Horny Trick. (laughs) (laughs) We agree. The nearest business happened to be an establishment filled with the cutest furry little creatures that you ever did see. Oh my god. Upon entry, we see stripper poles and various wooden creatures doing the most foul, dirty things imaginable. Oh my god, there's fucking... Most of the workers appear to be cartoony creatures like mice, dogs, and the like. (laughs) Mice, duck, dogs, and the like. Most of the workers appear to be Various cartoony creatures I already said that. Yep, you got it. Our heroes do their best to <laughs> ignore the more atrocious acts. Like a skunk spraying its booty juice <laughs> right into the face of a happy patron. After Man, that new Bloomboro m- sounds really weird. Disgust, <sighs> uh, our hostess approaches Gregory. Welcome to Disney World, where dreams come true. Table for three? And Gregory says, no. We were actually wondering if you could direct us to Sheldon's Cooper. (laughs) And the hostess says, uh, you're technically here. If you were to just keep going north a little bit, you'd find yourself right in the middle of town soon enough thank you very much miss and gregory attempts to read her name tag but it's so it's covered in income and jizz (laughs) (laughs) and she's only to make out a single word miss miss ass i can't laugh my brain hurts too much and horny trent says guys I'm sorry, but I think this is where we part ways. <laughs> this place was clearly meant for me. Gregory says, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. See you later, horny Trent. <laughs> and with that, Gregory and Chadford McKickflips. What about the pirate were shit? All that remained of the party. Did I say his name properly earlier? Sure, Chadford McKickflips, yeah. It's a I think good you might thing have said McFlip Kick, actually. <laughs> I might have, but here we are. <laughs> it's a good thing they left, too, because only an hour or two later, the SP- SCPD we conduct a raid of Disney World for the use of minors <laughs> oh in oh. sex shows. Oh, my God. SCPD would... Uh, Sorry, this case would ultimately be thrown out due the con- confusing uh due the conf- due to the confusing oh use my. of minors yep. in their I sex knew it. shows. This case would ultimately be thrown out 
Uh, due to the confusing nature of figuring out what ages would be would be appropriate for minors, like a one year old uh, a one year old mouse would actually be pretty old, but a one year old <laughs> puppy would still no, be pretty no. young. <laughs> I don't know. I don't get it either. I guess. Uh, glad we got out of that place. <laughs> Horny Trent, however, would be sentenced. To life uh, in the, the notorious Sheldon's Cooper prison, Guantanamo Bay, no relation. <laughs> uh, there he would be sentenced uh, and forced to uh, break rocks all day, except instead of pickaxes, they would use their hard boners. No. And instead Jesus. of rocks, they would use uh, the other, in- they'd be breaking the other inmates' balls. Oh, uh, Then they would switch off I'm every sorry, hour slack, on the hour. Slapping? It was a living hell. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. You're that wrong. Must be the finally, pain, just wrong. Finally, Gregory Huge member and Chadford McKickflips <laughs> arrived in Sheldon's Cooper Town Hall. Where they would be greeted by a townswoman working the front counter. Hi, y'all. My welcome to Sheldon's Cooper. My name is Tracy. Last name. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I run this here town hall slash video store slash Long John Silvers. Oh my, oh my god! god. No. Another I, brand reference. I did Rainforest Cafe. You, you did Long John. See, are you all here to see Mayor Sheldon's Cooper? Mayor Sheldon Cooper, or rent one of our many art house films? Or here to eat some shitty ass fish. <laughs> and Gre- Gregory says, and hush Hi, Tracy. My name is Sir Gregory Huge Member, and we're here <laughs> actually to deliver a package for King Orlando Bloom, no relation of Fallopia. <laughs> Gregory hands over the package to Tracy, who takes it and looks it over, and then scrolls through a, a large book. Well, thank you, Sir Gregory. Th- looks like this is just in time. Only a few more hours, and we would have, and this would have been overdue. Tracy then unwraps the package and reveals a great, and, and reveals the greatest film of all time: a Criterion Collection director's cut of <laughs> The Proposal, <laughs> starring Ryan Reynolds your- and Sandra <laughs> Bullock, <laughs> including. A questionably deleted scene of Betty White going to town on the whole <laughs> cast, and it's hot as shit. <laughs> Just then, Mayor Sheldon Cooper enters the lobby. Thank you for returning this, our favorite film of all time. I was mere minutes away from hunting you down and killing you myself. Jesus Thank Christ. you. Hell hath no fury like a Sheldon Cooper. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And then Gregory bows to Mayor Sheldon Cooper and begins uh, to set out once again for home. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, oh, Sir Gregory, I almost forgot, Sheldon Cooper says. Gregory turns, turns back to face Mayor Sheldon Cooper. Yes, my lord. <laughs> Bazinga. <laughs> And then Chadford McKickflips did like 13 kickflips in a row. Oh my god. Finn. Finn. <laughs> yes. Slow Bravo. clap for that. Bravo. Tyler. We'll see once I edit this Tyler, if that made any when sense. I tell you there's so many I'm sound way too waves drunk here. to have read all that. I want there, you there to know. There's so many sound waves in here that look that like is Spider-Man from the, the hardest. Lab. The hardest I fucking Dude, laughed in the longest was, time. I've never seen. I need that, everyone that to know. Lost. I am so drunk. I right. don't know if I read that in any sort of coherent. It's way. It's okay. Piece it together. I understood but the entire story. It every was part so I good. heard, I like. Before we wrap it up, though, for the next time we do this thing, we gotta pick prompts. Oh, prompts. Yes. yes. We gotta pick prompts. I think me and you were in charge of the first prompts, so I think. Oh, it's only fair that Matt and Jeremy pick Ooh, our next prompt. Okay. Matt and Jeremy, you two pick Warlords the prompts for the next time we do this. Do I got to come I up with one right maybe now? Maybe we do this like once a month, maybe every other month. 
Ooh, I'm down every with other that. month. Every other month for me. I'm so yeah, bad at writing. It, to keep and to keep our brains from literally exploding. Because if I'm doing this every month, I'm gonna literally die on camera from laughter. I, My head hurts so bad. Well, I have a this question. This room is so hot. What about Go ahead. warlords and warthogs? Oh, wait, you warlords get one. Warlords and warthogs. Wait, he gets one. So pick warlord or warthog. Which one? Whichever one. Well, it's only like funny warlords. in the combo. They're very, they're very different. Which one? Go with warlords, brother. I'll go with warlords. Mm. Warlords, Matt. Warlords. Pick, pick another one. Ooh, warlords and worms. <laughs> warlords and worms. Oh, yeah. Yes, I love yes, that I love so it. much. I have, to, I have to clarify. W O R M S. Yeah, not A R M S. I thought you could. You could have left that so vague. I'm, I'm, I'm letting you know right now. I'm cheating. I'm doing the why. I like it vague. I'm doing why. I like it. I'm doing worms. Do we do it vague? Do we do it vague? No, no, no. Leave worms. Leave worms. I'll make it work. I'll make it work. 